Let me take you on a journey back to 1912, when a passionate 40-year-old outdoorsman roamed the rugged wilderness of Maine, spending his time hunting and fishing. One day, after a particularly damp and cold hunting trip, he returned home frustrated with the poor quality of hunting boots available at the time. This was no ordinary man. He was a visionary who decided to take matters into his own hands by creating his own boots. The success of these boots, known as Maine Hunting Shoe, was phenomenal and the rest, as they say, is history. L.L. Bean has become an iconic 100-plus-year-old retail brand, renowned for its high-quality, reliable products. This is the story of how an orphaned boy's dream went from selling a single product to a multi-million dollar enterprise. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. Let's dive into this incredible tale. On October 13, 1872, Leon Leonwood Bean was born in the small town of Greenwood, Maine, one of six children. He was the son of Benjamin Warren Bean, a farmer and horse trader, and Sarah Sweat. His parents died within four days of each other when Bean was 12 years old. He and his five siblings were sent to live with relatives in South Paris, Maine. Bean showed an early interest in business, earning his first money when he was nine. He learned that he could either attend the local fair or sell steel traps to his father, so he decided to sell the traps and started earning his first income. He developed a love of the outdoors when he was pretty young and made money by engaging in occupations geared to the outdoors. He worked on farms, peddled soap, hunted, and trapped. At the age of 13, he killed and sold his first deer. For two years until he was 18, Bean worked on an uncle's farm in West Minot while attending school in the winter. At the age of 18, Bean worked on a farm in East Hebron. At 19, Bean attended a year-long business course at Kent's Hill School, paying his way by selling soap. In 1892, Bean worked in a Bangor creamery, followed by a job clerking in an Auburn clothing store. Bean married Bertha Porter in 1898. They moved to Freeport, her hometown, where he worked in his brother Otho's dry goods and clothing store. Bean worked at his brother's haberdashery store in Freeport, earning $12 a week and devoting as much time as possible to hunting and fishing. Bean was an avid hunter and fisherman. In his outdoor activities, his boots would become soaked with water, and Bean was tired of having wet, sore feet after hiking in the Maine woods, so he conceived of a way to keep his feet warm and dry. In a flash of inspiration, he set out to resolve this inconvenience and develop plans for a waterproof boot. The boot was a combination of lightweight leather on the upper part and rubber on the bottom. Not much of a craftsman, Bean had a local cobbler make him a pair of boots based on his design, and the famous boots known as Maine Hunting Shoe or Bean Boots were created. Testing them on his next hunting trip, the Maine Hunting Shoes kept his feet so dry that Bean was convinced they were his ticket to financial success. While the idea for the shoe was brilliant in itself, Bean's choice of a target market was sheer genius. From his experience working retail, Bean knew about the out-of-towners who came to Maine to hunt and fish were very wary about showing up with the wrong equipment. Bean felt the boot produced was of good quality. He obtained a list of non-resident Maine hunting license holders, prepared a descriptive mail-order circular, set up a shop in his brother's basement in Freeport, and started a nationwide mail-order business. He promised 100% money back for anyone unhappy with the boot. As a result, Bean had to refund 90% of the price of the first 100 pairs of boots when the bottom rubber started to split. Many would have considered this a disaster given up. 
But for Bean, it was a watershed event that led him to formulate the customer service policy his company remains famous for today. Bean promptly refunded everyone's money, but he didn't stop there. In 1911, he took out a loan of $400 and set off to Boston, where he offered the United States Rubber Company the remainder of his $400 to produce a better quality boot for him. With a new improved product to sell, Bean sent out more flyers, and once again, the orders poured in. Inspired by his success, Bean extended his product line to include other hunting and camping gear types. A true hands-on entrepreneur, Bean personally field-tested every product he sold. He would sneak out of the office for an afternoon of fishing and product testing. Bean's sales figures increased at such a rapid rate that in 1917, he moved his operation from the basement of his brother's store to the main street of Freeport, Maine. He employed people to cut and stitch the shoes. The following year, he applied for and received patents on his product from the United States and Canada. In a happy coincidence, Bean began selling his product the same time the United States Post Office launched its parcel post service. When Bean's brother became postmaster in Freeport, Maine, Bean opened his factory on the floor above the post office. By 1924, he had 25 people working for him and yearly sales of $135,000. Bean's product line grew to include other items helpful to people who lived, worked, and played in the outdoors. He designed and tested each product personally, believing it takes a sportsman to design equipment for athletes. This practice resulted in products appreciated for their practicality and price. His ideas included a duck hunter's coat that featured sewn-in mittens, all-wool socks, and the main auto sweater, designed for duck hunting and automobile riding. Bean also created the Deer Toter. The Toter, consisting of a frame constructed on a bicycle wheel, made transporting a dead deer much more straightforward. It quickly became a trend item for hunters. Over the years, Bean included even more valuable and innovative equipment, including items such as the Bean Sandwich Spreader, hunting knives, camping equipment, and an extensive line of clothing, now its mainstay. LL Bean sources its products from the US and across the globe. Treating customers well became a hallmark of Bean's strategy. He kept his company open 24 hours a day, aware that hunters and fishermen frequently need equipment or a license in the middle of the night. In addition, he listened to and addressed every complaint about the quality of his merchandise. L.L. Bean's golden rule to his dealings with customers was simple. Sell good merchandise at a reasonable profit, treat your customers like human beings, and they will always come back for more. This formula met with apparent success. In terms of its retail store, the company maintains its flagship store on Main Street in Freeport, Maine. This branch opened in 1917 and has been open 24 hours a day since 1951. L.L. Bean began global expansion in stores in the United States, Japan, China, and soon in Canada. According to the L.L. Bean website, there are 30 stores located in the United States, 20 in Japan, and 62 in China. In addition, the company plans to open a retail outlet in Canada, and expand its sales there. The company is a leader in the direct marketing industry, sending catalogs to over 170 countries. Reports of Bean's attention to customer service and the practicality, price, and quality of his company's products drew attention to the growing business. Bean and his company were soon featured in national magazines. People were attracted to the folksy image and charmed by the catalog, and soon both attention and sales began to increase. The success of Bean's business strategy is reflected in the increase in profits between 1924 and the 1960s. In 1924, the company, which had been in business for 12 years, had 24 individuals on staff and generated $135,000 in revenue. 
1937, sales of $1 million were recorded. By 1950, the company had more than 100 employees and achieved sales of nearly $2 million. In 1964, sales reached $3 million, and profits were $70,000. However, despite the considerable gains, Bean was opposed to expansion, fearing that his customers would dislike change and its implied loss of personal customer service. Despite his increasing age and frequent trips to Florida, Bean remained actively involved in the business. He continued to run the company with the assistance of his two sons and two grandsons. At the time of Bean's death in Pompano Beach, Florida, on February 5, 1967, L.L. Bean was a $4 million business. It remained family-owned and family-operated until 2001. In the late 1990s, the company was run by Bean's grandson, Leon Gorman. Gorman has brought the company up to date in business practices by computerizing the mail lists, increasing the number of catalogs mailed, and modernizing the retail store. Stephen Smith, a merchandising and marketing executive of a Walmart-owned Chinese e-commerce business, took the reins as the retailer's president and CEO in 2016. He is the first outsider to lead the company in its 103-year history. He will replace Chris McCormick, who became the first non-family member named president and CEO after Leon Gorman stepped down to become chairman of L.L. Bean's board in 2001. For 2020, the company reported revenue of $1.59 billion, a 5% increase over the previous year, with outdoor furniture sales nearly doubling and outdoor game sales up 65%. For 2021, L.L. Bean closed out its 2021 fiscal year with net revenue up 14% from 2020 to $1.8 billion. The company said its sales rose thanks partly to heightened consumer interest in the outdoor lifestyle, plus its investment in omnichannel, wholesale, 800 new products across all categories, and international expansion. What are the critical factors of L.L. Bean to becoming a successful company and taking the lead in the retail industry? Quality products L.L. Bean has built a reputation for offering high-quality, durable products that meet the needs of its customers. This has helped to establish trust and loyalty among its customer base, as people know that they can rely on the company's products to perform as advertised. Vital customer service L.L. Bean has always emphasized customer service offering a 100% satisfaction guarantee and easy returns if customers are unhappy with their purchases. This has helped to build trust and loyalty among its customers, as they know they can rely on the company to take care of any issues that may arise. Innovation L.L. Bean has always been at the forefront of innovation in the outdoor clothing and gear market. The company has continuously introduced new products and technologies that help its customers enjoy the outdoors more comfortably and safely. Marketing and Brand Recognition L.L. Bean has developed strong brand recognition thanks to its consistent marketing efforts and iconic logo. This has helped the company to stand out in a crowded market and attract new customers. Diversification In addition to its core outdoor clothing and gear products, L.L. Bean has diversified into other areas, such as home goods and accessories. This has helped the company reach a wider audience and reduce its reliance on any particular product or market. Today, L.L. Bean is a multi-million dollar company with a loyal customer base and a global presence. It is known for its commitment to sustainability and its responsibility to the outdoors, and continues to be a leader in the retail industry. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Until the next one.